Hello, my name is Detlef Reichneder. I'm Industry Manager at Autodesk. Thank you for joining today's session on Emerging Trends. We are going to talk today about emerging trends our customer facing across the world. Trends, they are tightly and closely connected to challenges our customers seeing day by day. And we are talking about trends impacting the current business and even more important, the future business climate of our customers. There are several sessions we are going to host for our manufacturing customers. This session is titled Driving Growth and Increasing Production Efficiency While Embracing New Trends. I hope this session will provide you with some ideas on how to approach those challenges with the help of Autodesk technology to become more successful and profitable and as the title indicated, to drive growth. A common saying is if you are not growing, you are dying. So why is growth that important? Growth is imperative in today's economy, basically because the way our customers are financing the business and the economy is working. Growth is ensuring to stay profitable and to have enough resources to compete in a changing and highly flexible and fast progressing world. In this session, we're going to provide you with some ideas how Autodesk technology will help you to drive growth, to stay competitive and to have a flexible production as well as to turn challenging trends in materials and technologies into an advantage, into a business advantage for you as a customer. The first trend I want to talk about is about offering highly configurable products and the challenges tied to that process. Today, customers are facing more and more highly configurable products and offerings. The complexity of those bidding projects is increasing and with that the implied risk. At the same time, companies need to increase the win ratio as well as to decrease the risk in technical offerings. The opportunity to convince end customers with correct and compelling offerings can increase the win ratio and with that helping to have driving growth for the company. So how can we help our customers to win more business with compelling, interactive and configurable offerings and evenly important how to reduce the risk of complex offerings by making sure the offer is correct and according defined rules. Let's take a look at the drivers. We see external as well as internal drivers for this change. Let's start with the external ones. First of all, customers are demanding a configurable product. Customers want their own product. They want it tailored to their needs. They want the right configuration, the right option, the right accessory, colors and materials. And they want it in time. Once they decide it, they want to get it immediately or at least in a predictable time frame. Second, the possibilities are there. Today, companies can produce a given configuration in a profitable way and in a projected time frame. Modern manufacturing methodologies combined with efficient logistics and stock management makes it possible to produce and deliver a configuration within a predicted margin. Leveraging those possibilities is essential, but it needs an efficient upfront process during the bidding to ensure that downstream processes like engineering and manufacturing and logistics gets feeded with sufficient and correct information. And at the same time, there is an increasing pressure from the worldwide competition. We see smaller but flexible companies emerging. They optimize their processes of bidding to manufacturing and this gives them a competitive advantage to compete with much larger and sometimes well-established companies by offering new generation customer experience. And last but not least, compliance with regulations is extremely important. It is required to be in various markets, but at the same time, it can be very costly. So let's look at the internal drivers. Those are usually coming more across as obstacles. First one, complexity of offerings. Most products and projects are extremely complex with a lot of rules and regulations. Those rules can be costing rules, engineering rules, 
knowledge about manufacturing, as well as external regulations like safety, health or environmental protection requirements. The number of variants is sometimes not any more manageable. And in many cases, potential variants are never produced before. Therefore, customers involve engineering in the bidding process. Engineering resources get tracked in into the creation of technical offerings. This is limiting the bandwidth of engineering and creates a bottleneck in the company. At the same time, too much of an effort is spent on lower margin standard offerings. There's often not enough bandwidth left to let engineering focus on added value work, on special high margin offerings and tailored proposals. This leads often to late or at least not in time and in worst case imprecise or even incorrect proposals. The situation can easily end up in additional unexpected costs for fixing bidding errors and it can erode the margin in projects. As a result, customer satisfaction is lacking due to the bid timing, the overall experience and the quality of the result. Over the last years, we have seen an evolving of the mentioned topic mass customization. It evolved from being impractical to being possible to now being re required. Customers require mass customization. So how are we going to enable our customers with Autodesk technologies to drive growth in this environment? With our offerings for sales automation production planning and visual configuration will bring engineering knowledge to the point of sales. We enable the technical sales team without involvement of engineering to develop and provide correct technical offerings. Those offerings include drawings, quotations, renderings, models, walk and fly throughs, videos and animations. This gives, this gives a revolutionary custom experience. And at the same time, it reduces the involvement of engineering dramatically. Custom examples show that this can be down to the level of a fraction of the effort before introducing sales automation. At the same time, the offerings are correct according to applied rules, and we enable our customers to reuse the data in the downstream process by creating the correct engineering or manufacturing models automatically based on the rules and the configurations. Our technology can be used as tools for internal technical sales teams as well as for external reseller channels of customers. But at the same time, it can be opened up as a web configurator for end customers, where end customers can configure and order their desired product interactively. One example is a point of sales configurator, which is used in a car dealership network to provide end customers stunning and interactive offerings of their configurations. Customer gives us metrics about benefits like time savings in the bidding process from days to hours, savings of engineering time by up to 80%, and an increase in bid precision of 10 times more than before automation. And with that, back to the topic of growth, customers are using sales automation, are seeing an increase in the win ratio, and with that, a growth of the business not just because of the sheer amount of offerings a sales team can generate now, but evenly important because of the quality and the precision of offerings. So if your company has configurable complex products, if you're facing complex technical bidding processes, if your engineering team gets dragged in into standard proposals, let's start a discussion on how our technologies can help you to improve your processes. Let's take a look at the second trend, enabling manufacturing for growth and change. In today's global environment, companies need to set up their production as flexible as possible and at the same time as efficient as possible. We did talk about growth and configurable products during the first section of this presentation. Increasing growth means increasing the needed production rate. At the same time, the lifespan of products is decreasing and the product complexity is increasing. Customers are facing challenges in the setup of new production lines. 
the transfer of productions from one location to another, or even simply the transfer of knowledge between locations with the same production. Enabling manufacturing planning to be efficient and being able to handle the growth potential is key. Today production planning tends to be a question of experience of a few very skilled people. Customers lack a real broad insight into the situation of the factory. We see the vast majority of planning is done in 2D as a result of the availability of ease-to-use 2D tools. At the same time, customers facing issues due to the use of 2D tools in production planning. There is only a limited amount of people who really understand the planning and all the implications. Issues are often overlooked and costly changes in installation happening. Most customers don't have an as-is documentation and often not even an as-built documentation of the factory. This leads to expensive mistakes or, in order to avoid those mistakes, timely and costly tape measurements for new projects. There is no such thing like a clash detection in a 2D drawing and most customers need manual processes based on experience to find critical issues. At the same time, planning tools do not provide any feedback on the quality of a layout. Basically, customers are figuring out issues very late in the process with a limited ab ability to impact the result and only highly expensive options to change it. So what are the drivers behind this? As already discussed, manufacturing capabilities need to support the growth. Having a large backlog is not an option. It is opening up the door to the competition, particular a matching competition. This we can see in several industries like aerospace right now, where companies cannot burn down the backlog of orders fast enough. The second driver is lean manufacturing. And this is most probably one of the most misused terms. However, it is important. And lean or lean manufacturing is first of all all about avoiding waste waste in general. What means waste in this uh, context? It starts with non-added value activities and it goes via energy, energy consumption, transportation and material use to the topics of waiting time and defects in the production. Avoiding waste is essential and leads naturally to lean manufacturing. In particular in times of expensive labor resources and energy, it gets extremely important to manage waste of resources and to optimize the way a production is planned and installed and running. The next driver, earlier decisions. In order to be able to optimize a production, early decisions need to be taken. What's preventing customers from doing that? It is basically the availability of enough information and the time in the process where customers today look at the optimization and simulating a layout. Due to the very complex system used here, customers either avoid the simulation or only do it late in the process and at the minimum. And this leads to an inability of change because of the implied costs of a change in the later stage of the design and planning process. More flexible production. We see an increasing need to produce more products with the same production facilities and to be able to move productions easier to other locations based on needs. Missing internal standards and a lack of consistent documentation of production facilities are limiting the effectiveness here. The next driver, ramp up time pressure. For new productions, then is an increasing pressure on ramp up time, not only for the installation, but for the time a production reaches to projected productivity. Time to market is not only depending on the time spent in engineering. A fair amount can be impacted by the ramp up time of a manufacturing process for a new product. And last but not least, global manufacturing. Customers need to plan for a global production. As an example, they need to incorporate international standards for buildings in order to be able to plan accordingly. At the same, same time, they might not have 100% control on the formats and data quality. And they need to plan with the, within the context of existing buildings, which might not be proper documented. 
Therefore, customers need to get access to modern tools which enable them to incorporate various data sources, modern reality capture method methodologies like point cloud scanning, and this need to be part of the design process in order to avoid mistakes and costly tape measurement projects. So how can Autodesk technology help to leverage this challenge as an opportunity? First of all, we have seen a lot of effort going into the engineering and design process of products itself. There was a major shift over the last two decades from a wooden drawing board to 2D CAD and from there to 3D. Nowadays, we, even, we are even more progressed and our customers using digital prototyping and PLM. But in particular, digital prototyping is still mainly used in the engineering process. There are massive untapped opportunities to optimize the way a production is designed and installed and ramped up. Today, the vast majority of companies are still using 2D for production planning. But a production line is by far not 2D. Several disciplines need to be involved, like the building, HVAC, structure, piping, and last but not least, the production equipment. The potential to plan closer to the reality in a digital factory environment is enabling companies to optimize the production in the context of those disciplines. Customers can identify issues much earlier by avoiding clashes and conflicts. Upfront optimization tools are helping to take informed decisions much earlier. Non-added value transportation and energy consumption, as an example, can be optimized already in the phase of, an, of a conceptual layout. We talked about standards earlier. Missing standards and 3D libraries or assets are one obstacle for an introduction of a digital factory solution. With the leverage of intelligent assets, which can be seen as the next evolution of standard parts and purchase components, customer will be able to really be really efficient. At the same time, the use of a cloud solution is enabling the communication and the sharing of information between vendors, system integrators and owners of production facilities. The collaboration in large project and a factory is always a very large project is key. Cloud solutions enable companies to communicate in a planning process very efficiently. Basically, if you see opportunities to improve the planning process for your factories, if you face challenges in installation of equipment like unexpected uh, clashes, if you want to capture the reality of your factories in order to avoid surprises, or if you need to provide your customer or even your internal stakeholders a better experience by providing a visual factory Let's have a deeper conversation on how our technology can help you to become more efficient. The last trend I want to talk about in this session is all about change, emerging technologies and new materials. We are living in a very fast changing world. Technologies are changing rapidly. New materials get introduced literally every day. New production methods which were exotic a few years back, becoming standard and commodity. And this is nothing new. It's a typical process. Just imagine the centuries it took to get from an oil lamp as the standard to a light bulb invented by Edison. Now think about the roughly one century it took to get to an energy efficient light bulb. And now consider the few years it took us to evolve to a LED light bulb. The introduction of new technologies and materials is getting faster and faster. Entire ecosystems of technology are developing in a global world much faster than in the old country-focused economies. We see knowledge shifting and some knowledge disappearing, while new knowledge is developing. As an example, we are still the experience to develop a film in a darkroom but everybody can now print pictures in high quality on a printer. Technical parts in mechanisms which needed to be manufactured from metal due to tight tolerances can now be made from plastics, much cheaper and much more efficient. Nanotechnology sounds still a bit like sci-fi, but nanocoating 
is already commodity in many places. These are enough examples. Our last major trend is an increasing speed in the introduction of new technology and materials, and with that an increasing need for not just handling it, but being ahead of the wave. Several companies underestimated the effort it takes to turn a missing opportunity in, in new trends around. Sustainability and, and is an example of such a trend. So what are the drivers? First of all, energy prices. The pressure on energy prices, which gets unpredictable, is massive. The only predictability about energy prices is it's becoming more and more expensive. With that, lightweight design and lightweight materials are becoming more and more important. With those materials, customers enter unknown territories and they need more simulation since there is no experience available. The substitution of traditional materials by plastics in several industries like automotive and the usage of composites in aerospace are good examples here. And those plastic parts need to be as reliant and high quality appearance and look and feel as the traditional materials. The combination of existing technologies like simulation and visualization to get an early understanding of material behavior, behavior is becoming increasingly important. The next trend, resource availability. In today's economies, economies there is a shortage on several resources, starting with human labor. Experienced engineers or engineers in general are a shortage in mature economies. Providing ease of use tools and integrated simulation helps less experienced resources to achieve great results. Talking about materials and elements, several elements like rare earth elements are heavily used by several industries in some products. But there is already an existing shortage which requires the recycling of existing products containing these elements. And this, as an example, makes recycling for several products all of a sudden very profitable and very interesting. Sustainability. Whoever believes sustainability is nice to have is missing the fact that sustainability is now required. It evolved from being possible to now being required. The awareness of customers about sustainability is high and still increasing. Sustainability considerations are already part of many, many purchasing decisions. And sustainability spans products as well as production facilities. It has an impact all over the manufacturing process from design, engineering to manufacturing. New materials. There is an increasing amount of new materials with various properties every day. Customers need to find ways to keep up with the information about new materials regarding their mechanical properties, as well as the eco-impact like carbon footprint, water and energy consumption in production of those materials, as well as recyclability. And customers are actively considering the impact of used materials for decisions. Design. Design matters. This is not new and certainly nothing surprising. What is new is that customers start to use completely new technologies in order to achieve their design ideas. So basically now technologies like 3D printing leads to a complete new way of styling and new product possibilities. Technologies like composites, not just layering composites, which are hard to mass produce, give companies an ability to achieve new designs with the same or even higher performance compared to traditional materials. And differentiation, last but not least. This is getting more and more important. Companies need to differentiate themselves by innovation, by design, by new technologies and materials. Competitors are getting closer. Competition from emerging countries are delivering outstanding quality in the meantime. Cheap and low quality still exists, but most of the traditional low-end competitors close the gap. New ways of differentiation is needed to stay ahead. So how can Autodesk technology help to turn the challenge of new technologies and materials and the need for sustainability into an advantage? New stunning designs are supported by our technologies. We enable customers to design without limits. 
And at the same time, we make sure that designs are not just appealing designs. We can provide early analyses on sustainability, manufacturability and behavior. Virtual wind tunnel tests as an example. Very early designs can be optimized. We can optimize the energy consumption of vehicles in this way. Workplace light analysis helps to optimize the working environment and helps saving energy costs at the same time. An analysis on solar radiation in combination with the airflow gives a better understanding on the needed heating and ventilation in factories. Simulation and analysis on new materials is supported by our own material lab, which provides best results for our simulation tools. And together with Granta, we provide the Eco Material Advisor, which helps companies to optimize the impact on a certain material mix in products. And with that, we help to optimize target parameters like carbon footprint, water or energy consumption on products. This helps you as a customer to approach new technologies and materials as an opportunity and not as a challenge, which can give you a competitive advantage. If you face the challenge of new technologies and materials, if new design concepts are challenging your product behavior, or if your customers are requiring reports on the environmental impact of your products, then let's start a more detailed discussion on how we can help with our technologies to turn all this into an advantage for you as a company. As a company, we have a very broad portfolio. So we are basically encouraging you to take a look at our solutions. We can support companies from design and styling where our tools are heavily used in the automotive industry to engineering design and simulation and to manufacturing. Our visualization tools, data management and PLM offerings are rounding up our portfolio. With this, we help our customers to drive growth, to be more efficient in engineering and manufacturing and to be successful in the changing world. I would like to thank you for your attention during this session.